Hello, selectors, and welcome to the Life Burst Podcast. Um, we're doing the best of the rest today. I, I took a little while between when I finished actually making the deck lists um, and recording them, uh, and then recording this a little later to give Hellfire some more time to work on his uh, website that he's been putting out. Um, Dex, Dexos, Dexos, Dexus, I think it's Dexus, um, dot app. It's a really good builder. Uh, it had a lot of updates since the last time I talked about it, um, and I think it's really, really very good. Um, I like it a lot. It does a lot of things that I genuinely like. For example, if you go to the builder, um, it's starting to get some syntax in it now. So, like for example, you can search for things that does not have life burst, and that's not something you can do in the original stuff. Soon, there's going to be levels on here as well. When I talked to him last about stuff, and another thing that he's planning on doing at some point is. Um, allowing you to be able to check um deck lists by your um your, by by people's names to so the life first podcast here um i'm gonna go over all of the decks that we uh need to go over last to to talk about what is going on in the we cross meta um i say last time let's talk about the tiers this is my current tier list um i added a couple things in here um the built thing, you don't need to worry about. That's just for me, mostly. Um, but I, I added some stuff in here. Uh, number one being I added a little up and down arrow so you guys can tell what has gone up, what has gone down over the last couple, uh, you know, sets. Um, the other thing is, uh, if you guys checked my last time there, was this. Uh, Andrew covers, Andrew does not cover anymore. I just It's becoming incredibly difficult to just cover... A sh like crazy number of decks, thirty one decks, thirty two decks, and counting, um, just to just to keep up with like some some deck lists. So I I need to drop some of these off on terms of like what I'm maintaining and testing. Um, I have a good idea of basically other people who are keeping up with these types of deck lists and are letting me know if things have changed or not. I'm also using my general opinion of like nothing's really changed in Miku Miku to to be like oh, it definitely breaks into B tier now. So I'm just maintaining things that are S tier through B tier. Um, I know that's not going to be everyone's favorite answer because I might drop some of their favorite um, some of their favorite decks, uh, in which case, you know, sorry about that. Um, but you, the concepts are basically the same. You can still watch the top 10 videos that I put out and update your decks accordingly. Um, but here's sort of what's kicking at the top of the the deck the 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 sphere. Another thing to mention is also down here. Like like if you wanted Pure Luke that's a discard mid-range and it's generally a blue black discard mid-range, you basically can just watch the changes that I've made for Tomago or maybe this Tama discard and then sort of add those same texts to your deck and you'll come out on top because again, the centers don't really matter as much as the um the archetype that they're promoting. Um, but I know people love their centers, so if they want to update their center with their favorite archetype, feel free. Anyways, getting into the actual nitty gritty here, I've dropped, uh, the big, the big thing is I've dropped, a uh, X and Deus, Atomic Deus out of S tier. Um, there's enough now going forward where there's other things challenging its claim to being the best deck in the meta, that there's no longer a real reason to say X and Deus are, um, the top decks in the meta. They, they still are the top decks, they are still an A tier, but their ungodly power that they had before is now starting to get challenged by other consistent archetypes that are, are ex existing. So I pulled them out of S tier, they're in the A tier now. Um, they, they're, they're just as strong, and in fact X got a very big boost in this one, um, but they're just as strong as they, they would be. But um, Tama, White Aggro, um, Tama discard midrange and Tama combo midrange, I know there's so much Tama on here, um, has challenged a lot of what X does and what Deus does and, and pushed it a little bit more to the rope. So they dropped down. Um, X does get a boost. It gets the, um, the Terra Beast, uh, trash sort of combo, which is most at home in black, uh, red. So X get a boost off of that as well as, um, as well as uh, Deus Aggro gets a boost out of that. Deus Aggro, I think, was in B tier last and is now creeped up into A tier uh, due to that. The um, Atomic Deus deck has really not changed at all, but that doesn't mean it's any worse for wear. It's better. Um, it's it's just it's still very very good. A lot of the Atomic Deus mid range decks have moved away from this and actually are now 
uh, this um, type of deck where they're actually a blue, black, and uh, white uh, as the shell goes. The white is, we'll get to it, but it's there basically to give them more cards in hand, which allows them to go more hardcore mid-range with their discard effects. And they're a little less atomic than they used to be. Uh, the Tama white aggro is still the same exact white aggro deck that, that you normally would be playing. Um, there's not really a ton of changes. The uh, top end has gotten a little bit more defensive to go a little bit longer game now that these discard decks are starting to really rear their head again in the meta. And speaking of discard deck, we've got the Tama discard deck. So this is the white, blue, black um, mid-range deck. And so it really uses um, the core elements of blue back discard that it used to use. And then what it's done is it has... Um, added Tama to it as its damage output. Uh, and it's using white now a little bit more cold, um, for things like uh, gay uh, and also, um, oh, what's the other card? Exia. I don't know how, why I'm brain farting that. Remember Yuki, some of these types of disruptive cards. Um, and it's, it's really starting to uh, cement itself as more powerful than Tamago discard control was. Um, so if you like the Tamago discard control, Tama discard mid range is probably the same sort of evolution of that deck for you. Um, there's then the combo Tama combo mid range. So this is a new one. Actually, should be um, highlighted. This existed a little bit in the last meta, and it was B tier in that last meta. I have a feeling that it's going to go up into A tier now, and I'm just going to go ahead and pop this up um, because it has some strengths in it that you wouldn't normally think of. Um, the picture frame really, the picture frame Signy that's coming out really adds to this combo and solidifies its ability. Right now it is mostly um, black, or sorry, and mostly red as its uh, third color, but sometimes you'll see black, sometimes you'll see a little bit of blue, but it's almost always um, white and green for the Komais in order for them to do their sort of endless punchline-esque type of effect. So this is really like the second coming of, of um, Lion. Lion's still in here, by the way, um, on the B tier, still holding on, um, but it's it feels very much like Lion wants to be. So if you wanted to be uh, the Lion player, switching over to... to uh, Tama combo would be a pretty good move. Um, then we've got Tamago control, right? This is the second Tamago too. Tamago discard control. It really hasn't changed much from its uh, its earlier years. It's better at milling the opponent out now a little bit with uh, the new level one black signy that does mill. Uh, Bernice. Um, Bernice, I believe it's pronounced. Anywho, um, so that, that has gone down. It used to be the best, but Tama discard midrange has sort of dethroned that a little bit. Um, Deus Aggro, I think that was an A tier last time around too. I realized that I didn't put any movement on it, so it probably was an A tier. It's still at the bottom of A tier. Got a little bit better. I think uh, it may have dropped to B tier if it wasn't for uh, the um, the Terra Beast Grave shenanigans that you can do with this, and you can pull the Grave shenanigans more off reliably with Deus than you can with X. There's still not so much powerful shutting things shutting out X, right? That Deus is. At some point, like, you might just swap these, right? X might drop down to here and Deus might go up there. The world that that exists is more like when you are really dealing with just nothing but discard in your meta. This might then come come take over this area. Um, X has also sort of changed and is now turned more into um, aggro that is uh, interaction resistant with Assassin rather than um, what it used to be, which is a little bit more like Enerburny. Uh, that is actually directly because it can still be somewhat enter Bernie because, again, you've got Kentokis. But that's actually due to Yuzuki here um, taking up the the realm, the 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 sort of um, reins for the enter burn aggro deck of choice. Um, let's drop down to Bang real quick, though, before we go into it. So Bang, my my build for Bang uh, is still very good, and I'm, I'm still getting a massive win rate with it. Um, but it does have its weaknesses. Notably, um, you can aggro it out. Um, and it, it, it has the tools to deal with aggro, but it basically is almost like 49 to 51% like good against the entire field. Um, it maintains its place because it actually gets a lot of upgrades in, in this set. 
and I think it's going to hold its place here at the top of B tier. Um, but I can see Yuzuki dethroning it and uh, Bang dropping down to second place here. Uh, but I think it would maintain second place over everything else that's here, especially because it is right now the green deck of choice, in my opinion. Um, so then we've got uh, Yuzuki, and I actually think I spelled that wrong. It's Yuzuki. Um, and, and it's got its, its red aggro burn um, enter, enter deck, right? And this is basically what Hirana used to be doing, but there's just so many tools now that make you want to go with uh, something that doesn't have to be in team to function that it's it still ends up being better. I think I think that he, Hirana and um, and Yuzuki are, are really, really, really close. And this is team, by the way, no limit. Um, I do think, for example, the um, Entwined Supremacy is not as good as Glory Grow, but it's only a hair worse, and the freedom to choose your own um, to choose your own assists really helps push Yuki or Yuzuki up above uh, Hirana. Uh, I personally prefer to go with a red black uh, build with lightly splashing blue. It really should just be more like this, if I'm going to be completely honest with you. Um, the blue being for, uh, like, some draw effects, so I can be hyper aggro with this. Um, some people would prefer to run white lightly on the side here for things like Remember and Yuki. Um, and I think that is a perfectly fine option, too. Either way, you end up mostly in red-black as, as your main call for it. Um... And I think that's I think it's perfectly perfectly reasonable there. A lot of people are being very enter um, the word enter enter greedy lately, right? We've got Tama um, aside from white aggro, the discard and combo mid range are very heavily kind of leaning into other colors, and so you can really easily punish them with the um, with the enter burn right now in the meta. Um, it's not really enough to really push it to the top because X has access to key enter burn while simultaneously also having assassin and being completely like interaction resistant, which is why this is the premier aggro deck of the format still. Um, but it, it is really good. And, and Yuzuki is starting to challenge people. Are you running Xeno cluster? And a lot of people are starting to not run Xeno cluster because they're running these value white black shells that have super Helestia saber instead. Um, and then they can get really burned out by the Enter Burn. Um, Madoka is uh, the mid-range deck. Um, I've actually changed it. it. It's no longer a tempo deck. Um, it was always sort of like, do you run Madoka as a mid-range deck? Do you run it as a tempo deck? And we really, um, especially on this channel, leaned into blue, um, blue, white, white as the main build for it. Um, and it was good to a time, but really what what has sort of hindered it is the power creep um there's a lot of been a lot of good tempo tools added to the three drop slot right now and and that's the same sort of problem I'm having with like almost all of these tempo decks is that there's a lot of good three drops um but the power creep has been in three drops and because their original power was also in three drops it ends up being that there's only marginal increase of power for the deck because it's like you're you're upgrading something with uh, let's say that was a um, seven out of ten and you're upgrading it to a seven point five out of ten or an eight out of ten. That's that's worse than if you were upgrading your threes to sevens. Um, so I ended up going more mid range in this now, leaning into sort of the the attritiony value plan because Madoka, what it does really really well even as a mid-range deck not tempo deck it's just mass level three signy discard so you can keep doing that type of thing and i think it is currently better as a mid-range deck and if i were to put madoka tempo on here um i probably would do like it like right around here like probably above deus and below um below um below everything else so let me just go ahead and add that in here just because it feels like that's something that people would still want. Um, and we'll do the V and add this to tempo. Anyways, um, I made the decision that I was going to convert my Madoka deck into the mid-range deck now, and um, that's what I've been more happy with in my testing. Um, right below it, though, is um, Aya, 
So Aya is the new build, and I put it sort of smack dab in the middle of B tier, because I don't exactly know if it should just be a little higher, or it should just be a little lower. Um, so I put it on the middle of B tier right now, just to start. Um, this is a uh, blue tempo, or blue blue um, tempo deck. Like, it is sort of the um, spiritual successor to the um, Madoka tempo deck. Um, and I think it's better. And the reason why is you just got certain plays in it that are a little bit more enter efficient, right? You can you can open up lanes a little bit more enter efficient. You can discard a little bit more enter efficient. You can do a lot of what the um, Madoka discard does. You can do it a little sooner. And I think that matters more for tempo. It was one of the things that I liked. Umir, for example, better than Madoka at one point because Umir starts the discard train rolling sooner. I think that that's um, I think that's the way to go with Aya. It's mostly a blue deck, by the way. It's very little. It's not really much a white deck at all. Um, and in fact, it could be even a mono blue deck, and I think it would be perfectly fine. Um, Umir is on here now. Um, so Umir is changed a bit as well. It's no longer. It's still a death and taxes deck, but it, it's it's a little more controlly, a little bit more grindy. We added black to it, but it is mostly a blue white deck still to this date it's changed quite a bit with the new um the new set that's come out because there's there's a lot of new there's actually specifically two new cards that really revolutionize the death and taxes aspect on it and so we're trying it out right now I'm not exactly sold that it could be here could be a little higher could be a little lower right now too um tiffany and i are really going to be testing out this new build that we've we've just built with it um just to see what direction we want to make it. We could lose the black at some point as well. Um, so Lion's here, Trusty Lion, right? Been here since set two, um, or I guess set one, because Interlude was set zero. Um, Lion's still here, still kicking it on on B tier. It, it does a job that the rest of the deck still can't really do. Even White Tama Agra, which arguably does the aggressiveness better than Lion does, um, Lion still can kind of win with this, um, un like, especially if the opponent is unaware of what's, like, going on. Like, if they if they don't get their guards, right, this Endless Punchline is going to rip them up. And and it's still tough to guard against Endless Punchline because you've got Remember as well as um, uh, Map. So it is, it's still, like, it still costs a million Enter to um, play, <laughs> to play the Map, uh, to, 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 to pay for your, your, uh, guards. And so because of that, line still does something that the rest of these decks don't do, which is offer a, 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 a I win button, right? As some other people were, were describing it at a point in time. I think that was Anthony who used to describe it as an I win button. Um, line still does offer an I win button, which the, the rest of these decks don't really offer. Um, and it has, still has a lot of strong white cards in it that make it able to still aggro with the best of them, right? And because of that, it ends up still maintaining its B tier. I don't know how much longer it will. I've, I've made a change with um, Card Jockey because I'm finally starting to feel the uh, the downside of the level two assists in the deck where it's just like they're not the most enter efficient in the world and they don't they do a job that is aggressive, but not at the greatest cost right now. So I, I wonder how long that team is going to be able to stay above the B tier. It might dip down to the C tier as of next set. But I made a change in it that, that I think is going to be uh, keeping it in B tier for at least maybe another year. I know that seems crazy, but n nothing can reproduce what Lion's putting out right now, which is why it stays in B tier. Um, and no one no one's running Machina Guardian Dragon. So so you're still very okay with running this this type of effect. Um, it is a little worse now that Energy Door exists, but Energy Door really only blocks like one thing of it. So it's and the other, the other, the other life bursts that shut down L Rig attacks permanently for a turn um, really still aren't mainstream. So Lion's still existing. Uh, Hirana has finally fallen. I remember back when Hirana was S tier, um, and it is no longer so. Um, it is B tier. It probably at moving after this set, I assume it will drop down to C tier. Um, Yuzuki just does everything that, that Hirana does better. Hirana actually, weirdly enough, maybe would evolve in the future as a mid-range red deck. Um, and there's also a 
hyper aggressive. It's really like a suicide red, um, red deck that comes into the um, meta at some point with um, with some of the new sets that Hirana could be the better leader for. It involves getting a lot of cards in hand and Hirana's ability to refill your hand for at least a little bit, right? The one the one draw and the one enter that you get from it could be enough for you to do that hyper aggro and push it above, you know, Yuzuki at that point. But currently as it stands without that that sort of hyper aggro combo existing, it just it just doesn't function as well as Yuzuki does. Yuzuki's able to strip so so efficiently able to strip um, greedy enter bases right now that it it sort of stays above. And it's also seeing a weird resurgence in ja Japan right now, by the way, um, because of the greedy enter bases that's starting to enter with the new Japanese color rule. Um, we're not there yet, you know. It's just something to keep an eye on. I think Hirana is not necessarily the de facto aggro deck anymore. Um, I would keep my eye on Hirana mid range because if anything probably pushes Hirana back up into B tier, it would be this mid range. Let's talk about that drop here now. Again, remember that C tier and B tier are not too far spaced off of each other. The win percent for each of these is like maybe 2% individually, right? So S tier is really only like um, 1, 2, 3, 4 uh, times. So it's like only 8% maybe better. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, Hirana, it was tough for me to push this under the um, this, but there's so many other mid-range decks that I think maybe do the job better right now. Um, Hirana's ability to push damage is still one of those things that mid-range really likes because mid-range can struggle to put push the correct amount of damage out. Um, but the real problem is not necessarily the center, which I still think is quite strong. Um, it's actually that red, black, um, and Blue, white, depends on how you want to play that last color, have not really gotten the mid-range buffs that you are, like, actively starting to be like, yeah, this is what I want to go with. Um, arguably, Hirana, if we were to upgrade it, probably is more of a red-blue deck than it is a red-black deck now. But that's also one of the issues, is that there's just, like, there's so many cards that pull you into being greedy with your enter base that you don't end up being quite red enough for for the red stuff that you want to do, the Nobunagas. Um and it's just point blank, like, uh, the Yuzuki and the X out aggro it, and X might even be able to out um, mid-range it if it was to go more into that mid-range sort of strategy. Um, but it's just, yeah, that's where Hirana's dropped to now. Uh, weirdly enough, I've put Miko Miko up here. So Miko Miko wasn't even <laughs> in, in any of these tiers, and I shot it the hell up to a C tier here. And there's a very specific reason for that, and that's because it probably is the best blue center to put into an atomic shell. Um, and I forgot to change this. This needs to go boop, boop, and that needs to be green. There we go. Um, and the reason why is because it ends up being a um, blue, black, green deck. Um, you're not playing this in team, but you're playing this as an atomic deck that is um, using all of the same normal atomic stuff you would for Deus. But the difference is you you are also using the green that is afforded to you by the um by the center uh by by the um excuse me um mel mel's is this line to do mel as your three stop um and you also run the multicolored uh tc as a green and blue multicolored, so you can splash that green really efficiently. The other card that actually makes its way into it is Chirin. So the deck, so Atomic Deus sometimes struggles with Enter and sometimes struggles with cards in hand. Um, but by leaning more into Miko Miko, which if the opponent is denying you discarding them, you draw cards. So it ends up fueling that mid-range Atomic Shell that you normally would. Um, it's actually a pretty good deck. I'm I'm not joking. Like I as much as I I think Miko Miko was a bit of a joke earlier on and especially the team that she does. I actually think if you want to run Miko Miko, Atomic Shell Miko Miko is actually a pretty good idea to do it. Also, Atomic is mostly a white a blue deck anyways, and that's something that Atomic Deus struggles with. And you have to be really careful with its enter. Um Miko Miko has no problem with that. Miko Miko is blue and thus uh, better able to do it. Um Dropping in down here, you'll see I've took taken out Lion 
uh, basically completely lines over here in D tier now as the Cosmos aggro um, thing of choice. And I put Musica on here. And there's a very specific reason why. Uh, black has taken over as the most populous um, color that you would be running in Cosmos, followed a little bit by, by white and red afterwards. So I wanted to switch to a, a black center. Um, and I will admit that partially I wanted to switch to a black center that wasn't Deus because I just didn't want to make more Deus's decks. But you could run a Deus there. I actually do like what Musica offers for Cosmos that none of these other decks can do. So what Cosmos aggro does innately extremely well is open up lanes. The issue is it doesn't have any ways to really push damage past it's um doing a couple extra da a couple damage per turn not extra damage per turn um and it also has really no way to mess with the opponent in terms of like messing with their enter messing with their cards in hand interacting with various things so it just relies on itself being a good stuff a good stuff um aggro deck and and that really doesn't win you games and we cross anymore you need to figure out a way to either go under these madoka clap three stops or you need to figure out a way to push past these discard decks um a lot of these things don't exist in for example lion lion just draws you some extra cards um musica however does get you some cards back from your trash um but more importantly it can bounce a level two uh, assist back to your hand, and the new Hanio line is really, really good, right? It not only enter charges you one, which this deck loves because it needs the enter to open the lanes, but it also, the level two, allows you to gain double crush. Now, because this deck opens lanes so efficiently, um, you end up needing extra damage more than you need ways to open up lanes. Because of that, swapping X out being the de facto um, Musica bounce choice for um, for Hanio, and Hanio allows you to get double crush twice in a game, is way, way better. And you also get cards, right? You can draw up to four cards, or you can you get enter charge up to four, which both Cosmos wants to keep itself above the um, discard decks and also above the um enter burn decks that are around just and also to give it push damage push because it needs the enter so that's the reason why musica 2 actually has increased in in um viability is by making it a cosmos deck and specifically using hanio and now that we have a critical mass of black cosmos is uh, basically everything's unlocked for this i really genuinely think that if you're running a cosmos aggro deck you need to switch over to musica 2 at this point um, so we got Madoka, this is the tempo mass discard we talked about dropping that. Um, Deus, mid-range, mid black-white recursion value engine, you're still using Exia, bringing stuff back. Nothing's <coughs> really changed much from the last set to this set. So, you know, it's it's good. It's a good deck, um, but it just doesn't quite... You, with the lack of discard interaction that's added to it that I think could push it over the top, it ends up being not really where I want to be. And if I end up in this sort of like, I want to add blue to this to make it so that I have more control over my opponent, I end up finding all these other decks that I would rather do. The Madoka deck, I'd rather do the um, the Atomic deck over here. I'd rather do the uh, Tama range, midrange deck discard deck so I, I think that keeps all basically that keeps this idea down but if you wanted to be straight black white recursion which is got a good matchup against other discard decks feel free it would actually benefit you to do that type of deck um but i just don't think it has a, such a wide swath of win rate against the field that it goes up even though it's got the most powerful center in the in using it um and the next one is Pure Luke. Uh, this one's has dropped from up here. Pure Luke has basically just been dis dethroned. If you wanted to do uh, discard control, you end up having Tomago basically better than that. If you wanted to do more of a uh, tempo deck, you end up having Aya and Umir basically doing that job better. And if you wanted to have more of a mid-range deck, you, you've got um, Madoka 2 and also the Tama discard deck that's sort of doing everything better than Pure Luke. I know that's blasphemy for some people. I remember saying that uh, Pure Luke wasn't the greatest uh, discard deck in the format and like 
five people commented on the video saying, how dare you say that to Pear Luke? I just don't think it's, it's because it relies so much on its main deck to lift the weight to enable its, um, its center abilities. It ends up just being a little worse. You kind of would rather have your center's ability help your main deck rather than your main deck help your center's ability. Um, Maho Maho is a surprise even to me to put it on here. Um, so it's basically stacks, right? So I call it resource control here. I think I'm just going to call it control stacks. Um, but that's a term that like not a lot of people know, except for Magic the Gathering people from smokestacks back in the day. Um, this is a resource deny denying um, control deck, right? Otherwise known as stacks. So it, it, it doesn't let your opponent have... Um, it doesn't let your opponent have uh, cards in hand. It doesn't let your opponents have enter if it can help it. It doesn't let your opponents have um, uh, a great... Uh, it mills your opponents out. So because it's milling your opponents out, they refresh, and that means it really doesn't have much of a trash to speak of later down the line, too. The goal for Maho Maho is basically to outlast everything. Um, and weirdly enough, being black as a center helps it because then it focuses it less on blue and more on black with white and it really does like white black just can outlast most decks the little bit of blue in it is just simply to give it a little bit of interaction kind of the same thing we were talking about with deus here just a little bit of interaction to allow it to consistently do its once per game effectively um but it's not a it's not an emphasis on discard right the emphasis is mostly on just general resource denial um Akino 2, this is the uh, aggro deck that just basically, instead of running a lot of aggressive cards that the Tama white aggro deck does, this runs a lot of the um, aggressive, like it runs a lot of the um, more defensive Signy, so Zhao Yun, um, the level 1 8000 power, level 1 uh, white Signy, these types of things because it wants to use Akino's ability basically every turn to open up lanes. Um, and it is also, for what it's worth, a little more enter efficient than the Tama White aggro deck is. So it is a thing where if you're like, God, I never have enter to really work with Tama White aggro, Akino is another good choice that you could totally run instead of that. Um, and it's quite, it's it's power level is comparable. I just do think Tama does the job better. And Akino's um, ability is a, not as good. And there's not really a ton of these white walled signies that I'm really looking to play in um in We Cross right now, that it ends up being a little lower than the rest of them do. Um so at mid-range with Worlds Reverse, um this might go up in the future. We're trying to rebuild the deck, retool it completely, just because Tiffany wants this deck to perform better. So we're trying our best to give it some of that uh life burst love and push it up a little bit if we can. But right now as it stands, uh it's just a worse option, right? Like the team it's like Ots Whew, how do how do we say it? Ott's team may be the oh, I don't know. It's not the worst, but it is not great either. It's just it's just very marginal. So uh, team Signy wise, it's not really good, and you wouldn't play it outside a team because the power is coming from Worlds Reverse. Um, there's a world where this deck is more um, red green focus and you can make more of a stompy deck out of it and i think that's maybe the direction we're thinking about going with it um but it is it's not quite there yet and then likely nova here it's sort of in its last hurrah um it may drop a bit with mel coming out there's even less reason to run um uh bang to capo um it still could do it. It's still a very difficult deck to pilot. I put it at the bottom of C tier because I don't quite believe it is D tier yet. Um Senga still still holding on strong here in the D tier as the top of D tier. I really genuinely think Senga is a fine deck. I just don't think it has quite enough to push it up here. Um, the Rainbow Midrange deck. Wolf over here with its Endless Punchline. It's just still sort of a bad... Um, a, a, everything that I would say about um, uh, Lion in the bottom of B tier is, uh, up, up, uh, is definitely can be said for... Wolf. Uh, it does have a, a good ability that it can go with um, MC Lion Disrespect and MC Lion Dig, which is still one of the best um, three stops in the games. Um, but it getting the full set of Lancer 
that you used to be able to is now really, really not enter efficient anymore. So like, even though it could go up, it has also gone down because of that. Um, Lion here for uh, Cosmos Aggro. Um, this is still, if you just want Lion 2, you want to draw cards, you want to play Cosmos stuff. It doesn't have the upside of like, for example, being able to do a lot of uh, the um, Double Crush that the Musica 2 deck does, but it, it'll get the job done. Uh, Rill, I genuinely thought Rill was a bad deck for a while. Um, but as I was making it and testing it more and more, I realized it's actually not that bad of a deck. It is mostly red with a splash of blue and black, mostly blue. Um, and it ends up being playing more like a tempo deck, which is, there's not really any red tempo decks, so this is actually pretty cool. Um, it's a fine deck. It's, it's a, it's a perfectly, it's a perfectly reasonable deck. It just, it has, you're fighting so hard to make Rill the center good, that when you actually enable it, the payoff is just not great. So it ends up being just a fine deck that leans mostly on its main deck to be pretty good. Um, we've got uh, Tamago Freeze Control. Now this can be blue-white or it can be just mono-blue. Freeze Control is still fine. Um, it's always going to exist sort of at the bottom of uh, the the world. And Tamago is still the best, person, the best center that you can use for Freeze. Um... Maybe maybe one day that'll be a new one, but freeze sh uh, shenanigans in general are still pretty okay, especially if you end up in a very control meta. If, like most, if you're like I'm playing control, complete control, controlling control. control. Uh, Tamago freeze control is the control deck that kills other control decks. Um, then we've got Ray two. I dr I've dropped this significantly. There's just so much other ways that you can enable the blue white white shenanigans of uh, a tempo or what or aggressiveness that it's just ray is just barely hanging on to that d tier and i fully expect it to get nudged out as of the next um the next uh couple sets um uh, i want to see what happens uh moving forward with the um the sort of like the meta in this it's a little bit harder to tell what the meta is now because of the um just the rise of uh, it's hard to tell what the meta is now because there's just a couple less online tournaments that are happening consistently so i have to depend mostly on what you guys tell me and what people tell me in in, in the chats and in slack and and have messaged me i so i'm gonna need you guys to to message me now more than ever comment on the videos now more than ever what you guys are playing for we are seeing around in your your shops and i'll make adjustments from that i i'm i'm making do with what i see around as well as just my initial gut feelings um i could see things like miko miko jumping up into b tier i could see aya going a little higher i could see some of these tamas separating each other maybe discard tama going a little higher um and that's sort of like the changes i can see and the long-term changes that i can see are more like just some of these basically shifting. A lot of the new centers that we're going to get for the next couple sets aren't super great, but the assist lines are really good. And we're going to start seeing that a little bit more, and that might push some of these numbers up, push some of these numbers down. But we're not going to see like what Tom is doing right now, where Tom just shows up and then just automatically inserts itself in the meta. We're not going to really see that till Remember shows up, and I think Remember shows up maybe in set 9, set 10, I can't remember. So we've got a little while to wait. Uh, we'll also see a lot of ch changes in the L rig deck in terms of um, uh, the the this the um, the uh, oh god why my brain fart the pieces in the next set so that will shift things as well. Um, but that is the um, tier list. If you guys like it, let me know. If you guys want to tell me what your favorite decks are, what you're most likely wanting to play, and if you disagree with any of the things I said, go ahead and comment down below. I'd love to have that conversation. Um, the next video will be about the, um, the actual decks themselves. We'll go over everything uh, one by one.